Just got out the shower. Taking my lab coat sledding. Ha <laughs> ha! Alberta had an insane weekend. Just look at this bonkers weather map from Sunday. Temperatures in the minus 30s, minus 40s, smashing records up and down the province for this time of year. And let's all spare a thought for the poor people in Keg River. It's a small farming community, about a seven hour drive northwest of Edmonton. They recorded a low on Sunday of minus 50.6 degrees. Minus 50. And if you're wondering whether that's Celsius or Fahrenheit, it doesn't even matter because we're basically at the point where the two scales converge. Minus 50 degrees Celsius, minus 59 Fahrenheit. That's the coldest it's been in Alberta in the last 20 years. One of the coldest places on the planet at that exact moment in time. And it's the temperature at which instant noodles start to do this. So as the weekend approached, the warnings were all over the news. Brace for a dangerous deep freeze. Bone chilling temperatures. Severe weather. Breaking records. And sure enough, it's cold. Jesus, I'm pretty sure it's close to minus 50. We don't want to go out there. Look at this. They start setting all kinds of community records. In some cases, hitting pure cold the way they haven't seen in more than a hundred years. But there's a real health and safety risk here because if you run out of power during a minus 50 degree deep freeze, as in you have unreliable heat, then people could literally freeze to death. And the operator of Alberta's electrical grid is starting to see a problem. Their social account hadn't posted in months, but at 11.35 a.m. Friday morning, they write, demand for electricity in Alberta hit a new hourly peak of 12,384 megawatts on Thursday. We can see from their most recent supply and demand report, which is a beast of a document, by the way, that this exceeds what they generate. As in, at this point, they're in a power deficit. Even now, they're having to draw on reserves. Alberta's total capacity to produce um, is around, it's just over 20 gigawatts. However, we have to keep in mind how the grid is designed and how it's designed to run, right? It's never expected that all of that generation is going to be available at any given time. At one point, reserve power was down to 10 megawatts, which is like having this much water in a bucket that's supposed to be full. They were forecasting being hundreds of megawatts in the hole even after using all of their backup reserves. So an emergency alert is issued. This uh, went out to uh, the, the phones across the province. This uh, warning of high risk rotating power outages. 6.44 p.m. Saturday. Extreme cold resulting in high power demand has placed the Alberta grid at a high risk of rotating power outages this evening. Albertans are asked to cut their consumption. Turn off anything you're not using. Use your microwave instead of your stove. Don't start that load of laundry. Maybe don't charge your car right now. And who would have guessed it worked? So it was a tremendous response by Albertans. Um, we really, really appreciate it. Um, and so that really made the difference. On CBC Radio's Daybreak Alberta Sunday morning, we heard from the electrical operator how in real time, they saw a drop in power demand. It immediately fell by 100 megawatts, and then a couple minutes later, it fell another 100 megawatts, so a 200 megawatt drop. And that got us through um, what we call the, the, the hump. Saskatchewan also managed to send power Alberta's way, another 153 megawatts to help with the shortage. All of that was enough to avoid having to resort to rolling blackouts. But today, Alberta's by no means out of the woods. Monday was another day of record cold temperatures. The province continues to be at the mercy of low wind, which really cuts into how much wind power you can generate. And at least two natural gas plants are under delivering right now. One due to maintenance, the other just offline altogether. And so it's kind of the, the combination of all of those things uh, coming together at the same time that produce that tightness. And it should go without saying, any province dealing with temperatures this far into the negatives has to cope with very real health risks. Frostbite and hypothermia are the biggest dangers. And think about the homeless. I just wish we 
there's more things for people out there for, for, for housing and stuff. One nonprofit in Edmonton, which normally doesn't offer overnight services, they plan to take in 50 people as an exception over the weekend. On Thursday, they had 137. Friday, 187. And Saturday, 230. It's been a pretty significantly higher number than we had anticipated and, and certainly our team has felt um, you know the pressure of that as has the community as we've tried to make sure that we're getting everyone in. They told CBC they haven't turned anyone away. That's a lot of humanity for what are very inhumane temperatures and here's to hoping next weekend goes a lot more smoothly. It's supposed to get a lot warmer.